What is a loophole you found out and exploited to the max? I received a coupon from Papa John's in the mail that said something along the lines of sorry you weren't happy with your last experience with us, please use the attached coupon for a free large one topping on us. I didn't file any complaints and had no idea where this thing came from, but the place I was living had no decent pizza delivery options, so I did occasionally order from Papa John's. I figured it was just a promo or a mistake, but whatever, free pizza is free pizza. I ordered on the phone, told them I had a coupon, and got my free pizza, but they never took the coupon. For about three months, I ordered a large pepperoni once or twice a week, told them I had a coupon and got the pizza for free without ever having to actually present a coupon. Finally, on like the 20 something free pizza, they had written in giant black Sharpie on the box, get coupon. So I gave the guy my golden pizza coupon and thought, well, damn, no more free pizza. The very next day, I got another coupon in the mail, which also worked for another two months before they finally remembered to take it. I can explain that for you. Having worked for PJ's 18 years, the postcard is automatically generated when your delivery time is 35 minutes or more. It states, your last order did not meet our timely standards. Then it's mailed out by the marketing department. There's a one-time use code on there for online orders too. Eventually, someone at the store will notice and put a note on your account for no more free get coupon and your free ride is over. Do you mean time out the door to address is 35 minutes? Because I don't think I've ever had a Papa John's pizza delivered within 35 minutes of ordering. My old job was supposed to be salary, but HR made a mistake and made me an hourly worker with 40 hours a week. My old job required a lot of work and a lot of overtime during quarter one and holiday season. During that time, I would do 70 plus hours of overtime for weeks at a time. 40 to 50 was 1.5 times, 50 to 60 was two times, and 60 plus was 2.5 times my hourly. I was supposed to make 55 to 58K like my peers. I ended up with 90K plus. Nice. Salary employment is one of the biggest scams there is. Not for those of us that regularly work less than 40 hours, salary is awesome for me. This was back when you actually needed long distance phone service to call beyond the city limits. I received a letter in the mail from one of the companies for $100 if I changed my service. I didn't make calls, so it didn't matter, so I switched. About a month later, my old company offers me $100 to switch back, and since there weren't any limitations, I switched back. A month later, the other company offers me another $100 to switch back to them, so I did, and about two months after that, the original company offers me another $100 to go back to them. In about six months, I made $400 and never made a single long-distance call. Hello, sir. Would you like some free money? Ordering online from a certain pizza place, they added a feature to their website of repeat a past order. Well, remember that one time they had a special of $7 for a large that normally cost $14? Yeah, I repeated that past order for about two years. $7 every time. They've now fixed it so special deals don't continue to apply. The Papa John's near me had a coupon code for $10 on any pizza, but it was only supposed to work Monday through Wednesday. So I decided to try it on a Friday once and it worked. Turned out they forgot to program in the days that it was valid. So I had $10 everything pizzas for a year before they fixed it. I bought so much pizza in my 20s that I have a ton of free pizza rewards. Turns out it's just cheaper to buy from Domino's at full price with free delivery than to get a free Papa John's pizza and pay for delivery. Ninth grade science class. We had a contest to build a device in which you could place an egg to protect it during a fall. Scores were evaluated based on size and how well the egg survived. I believe the formula was intactness of the egg, scale of 1 to 10, divided by the size of the device's longest side measured in meters. Most people built elaborate devices that net scores around 100. The number 2 winner was 112. I took a tiny piece of tape and stuck it to the egg. I scored 12,000. The next year they changed it so the egg's integrity was calculated on a scale starting with zero. Scores 12,000 on egg drop assignment. Doesn't need to worry about classwork for the rest of the grading period. This essentially happened to me in the 8th grade English. The teacher gave extra credit based on taking quizzes on books you had read. As an avid reader who had read hundreds of books that were in the quiz bank, a program on the library computers. I took a hundred or so of the quizzes at 10 questions each, got my grade percentage up to like 450%, then did nothing for the rest of the year and got 212% final grade. On a semi-related note, I also scammed my 7th grade Spanish class. I went to a charter school for 6th, 7th, and part of 8th, then transferred to a public school with the quiz teacher, 
and in sixth grade, one of my friends took Spanish online because our teacher sucked. I told my mom I wanted to do that next year, and she said sure, told all the teachers and admin staff that I was going to be doing it, then got halfway through the process of signing me up and getting everything in order and ended up not doing it and told me to just suck it up and take it at school. So the school thought I was taking Spanish at home. My mom thought I was taking it at school and I really was playing computer games on the school laptops every Spanish period. Also, the Spanish teacher must not have known what to do when she was giving out grades, so she just entered a 100% for mine. When I was a kid, we went on a field trip to the local amusement park. There was a particular carnival game, the kind where you have to guide a bowling ball down metal rails, that worked on the then brand new Sacagawea gold dollar coins. They had a change machine right there to help you change your dollars for them. Well, the machine was clearly a converted machine that used to change dollar bills for quarters because for every $1 bill you put in, it spat out $4 coins. I put every dollar I had in it and then I went to get change for my larger bills. When I got back there was an older man doing the same thing. He tried to shoo me away, but I told him if he didn't share the wealth, I'd report him. So he let me get some more. I probably made about 60 bucks, which for a 15 year old at the amusement park was a fortune. Good work. I was young and greedy. What can I say? This wasn't my first time doing this, but in 2014, Sears and Kmart had a patch kit that you could buy online for $15, but gave you $30 back in points. After you had points, you could pay for another with all but one penny in points and get another $30 in points. You could also buy multiples at once. Over $10,000 in patch kits later, I had two new TVs, a full new electric tool set, and about 3,000 in tablets I sold to pay for an awesome Christmas for my family. I called it the Great Sears Heist of 2014. Sears has somewhat caught on to these things now, so you can't do it anymore. But what a crazy two to three years it was. By the way, I also got around 500 patch kits in the mail. Couldn't believe they actually shipped all of them. It was hilarious. You used to be able to buy RuneScape membership with your mobile phone. I don't know if you still can. So I would go to an AT&T store at the mall, use their phone to buy three or four memberships and trade the confirmation code for in-game currency. I used to go to the AT&T store at my mall and max out the 110 monthly limit set on the phones. For three months, I was rich as hell on RuneScape. I had all the coins I could ever need on Habo Hotel, until one day I went into the store and all the employees looked at me. I tried using the phone, but they caught onto me and blocked purchases from the cell phones. You flew too close to the sun, comrade. If any class has homework that involves watching a documentary online and then answering questions about it, you can probably find the script online and then just control F to search through the script to find your questions. For one of my college classes, every week we had to watch one or two documentaries that were normally about an hour long. Ain't nobody got time for that. Also works for TED Talks. My company had a matching gift program up to 5K. My son was in private school. I paid his tuition to a nonprofit that just sent the money to the school. My company matched the gift and effectively paid the other half of his tuition. And this gift was tax deductible. Single mama's got a hustle. What nonprofit sends the money to the school? Is it a general one or one just for that school? The school was very small and run slash owned by this very wealthy lady. Most of the kids who attended were on scholarships of some sort. Very few actually paid full or any tuition. I had to pay full tuition because of my income but it was still way too expensive for me. One day, I got an email telling us that my company had doubled the max matching gift. Something dinged in my head and I decided to call the school to see if they were a nonprofit. They were not. I explained what I was trying to accomplish and was told they had a sister organization that handled their scholarships. Since they really wanted my cash, they called the lady at the nonprofit org and set me up for free. Way back in the early days of Chipotle, they teamed up with my local movie theater and any time you went to a movie and brought the ticket to Chipotle, then boom, free burrito. Well, me and my craphead friends jumped on this almost immediately. We hounded the people who left the movie theaters for their used tickets. We looked on the ground outside of the theater. We even looked through the top layer of the trash. For like four months, I ate Chipotle every damn meal and for free. The day after Chipotle was closed for E. coli or Ebola or whatever, I went to get my free burrito. It was the company's apology for the inconvenience of being closed the day prior. Well, there was a metal staple in my burrito. I brought it up with the staff and the owner apologized and gave me cards for five free burritos. I filled out an incident report and got a call from corporate later that day. They sent me another five vouchers for free burritos. Not really a loophole, but I got 10 free burritos because there was a staple in my free burrito. There was this vending machine at my school that made hot cocoa. I was bored and pressed every button on it. 
Apparently one button worked without paying, so every morning I went to school and pressed the button. It worked from last year until now. Some people noticed it and also took advantage. So it was finally repaired. My school has a vending machine just like this, except with candy and chips. If you pressed one particular button, not only would it give you the food in that slot, but it would also drop a couple of dimes into the change slot. They just fixed it a couple of months ago. Such a depressing day in my life. I once owned a large vending machine. I would put candy and chips that have reached their expiration date or ones that would reach it before I would restock it again in a free slot. I didn't announce that the slot was free. In the state I had the vending machine in, you're not legally allowed to sell expired candy. So I gave it away rather than eat it myself. People knew about and shared the secret of the vending machine. But because of it, I made more money than I lost and eventually had no use for the expired candy row because the machine had become so popular around the office building. A restaurant near me has a salad bar. I like eating off the salad bar. Unfortunately, it costs $11 with a beverage. The same restaurant also has their own version of a Big Mac and sells it as a combo, one side, one beverage, and one sandwich for like eight bucks. The restaurant allows you to substitute a side dish for the salad bar for $2. Overall, I save a dollar by adding a burger to my order. Usually, I just take the burger home and eat it later. All of the vending machines where I worked were the fancy refrigerated touchscreen serve entire meals type of vending machine. I discovered one specific machine had a glitch where if you punched in A4 when A4 was out of stock, but still tried to pay, it would spit your money back out and let you order again without charging. So every month I would spend about $10 or a few days to make A4 run out, then enjoy free food for the rest of the month. What was in A4? Usually some type of microwave burrito or sausage biscuits and gravy. When I was a kid, Hostess Snack Cakes and Fruit Pies had a promotion where every game piece that came with them was a potential winner. You had to scratch off three of the six spots and get three that were winners. Three were winners and the other three were void. I figured out that if you held the game piece up to a bright light bulb, you could tell which ones had X's and I'd scratch off the ones that didn't. I ate so many free fruit pies that summer. My brother worked as a manager for a KFC. One day he brought home about a thousand of these scratch off tickets. We started peeling them one by one, but eventually found the light trick. We ate free chicken for like six months and decided to give all the bad stickers, a couple hundred at least, to our friend as a practical joke. He opened all of them. That's pure evil. There was a vending machine in our dorms where you could select an option, put in a dollar, unplug the machine, and get your item and dollar back. We used that almost every day until a kid with morals told our live-in professor about the loophole. Damn those kids with morals. In Ireland, you used to be able to drive unaccompanied on your second provisional license, basically a learner's permit. I failed my driving test, then my dad told me about the loophole and I didn't bother taking the test again and just drove around for years with L stickers up. They closed that loophole a few years ago but lots of people still do it, especially out in the country. I have since passed my test. Our teacher gave us a timed take-home test online and said we could use the internet because if we did, we'd probably run out of time anyway. So I looked up the first question and lo and behold, the entire test in the same exact order on Quizlet. I almost cried. Regardless if the internet was allowed or not, you should look it up anyways. In Sweden, you can wank in public so long as you don't specifically do it at someone. So long as you look down, you can happily do it without issue. How are you sure you've exploited this to the max? I have a park bench named after me. They call it the Krusty Krab. The guys at 7-Eleven near my college in NYC don't understand how the coffee apps work. Basically, they scan it every time you get a coffee and every seven you get a free one of any size. However, multiple workers at this particular location are completely oblivious to this and give me a free one every single time they scan it. I do this multiple days in a row and sometimes multiple times a day. They work at a 7-Eleven by a college. It's not that they don't know, they just don't give a crap. By law, if you send a cease and desist to a bill collector, they have to stop calling you. They owe you $500 for each call they send out after that cease and desist is given. A bill collector robocalling system didn't stop calling me if I had the phone off and no voicemail service was configured. I had a lawyer send a cease and desist at 5.29 p.m. on a Friday of a three-day weekend via fax and turned my brand new no voicemail configured phone off. And that is how I paid my student loans. How did you determine that they'd called you with the phone off and no voicemail configured? To my knowledge, my phone won't show me a log of who's called at what time while the phone is switched off. I'm gonna try that now, actually. 
I was, at the time, an automation engineer for a major telecom, so I had a hint on how it worked. That, and I looked at the call records. Verizon had a deal where if you switch over a line from another carrier and give them your smartphone, you get two additional gigabytes of data per line at a smartphone. All four of my family members had newer iPhones, but instead of trading those in, we went to Walmart and bought four smartphones for 30 bucks each and traded those in without even taking them out of the packaging. Saved a bunch of money, kept our nice phones and got eight gigabytes of free data and got four new smartphones for free. When I worked at MetroPCS, we had a deal where you'd get a pretty good smartphone for free if you switched from another carrier. We were actually encouraged to tell people to go to Walmart or the Dollar Tree, buy the $20 track phone, activate it, and then switch that number to our service to get the discount. Found I could dial all the numbers but one on a business phone, four lines at the frat, and then put it on hold. Did this with all four lines. When the radio station said the sixth caller gets the concert tickets, hit the flasher and dialed the last number. I rang right through, so I tied up AT&T computers and won a bunch of prizes that year. Fun fact, calls come in so fast there's no way to pick the sixth one, it's just said for effect. Once about 15 years ago, I won concert tickets from the local jazz station because the DJ forgot to say their phone number when he started the contest. I just looked it up online and started calling. The fifth caller was supposed to win. I was the first caller, the second caller, and the third caller. The DJ asked why I was the only one calling and I told him that he never gave the phone number. At that point, he just gave me the tickets. A few years ago, long before the Steam market, Steam started selling games to poor countries like Russia with big discounts and no gifting or activation restrictions, meaning you could theoretically buy games for cheap, trade them for TF2 hats, sell hats for PayPal, and then use PayPal to buy more games to trade for more hats getting like 40% pure profit per game. I didn't exploit it too much, just traded a bunch of games for a bunch of hats. No potentially scammy PayPal business, but yeah, soon Valve closed it up. No more gifting of AAA games, activation restricted to CIS countries, and in some stupid cases, even language itself is locked to either Russian or Chinese. Back in college, I lived in an off-campus community that was still under campus jurisdiction meaning they could enforce campus policy such as parking. They sure did love their hundreds of thousands of dollars of free money every year. But I digress. If you lived out there, you got a special pass that stuck to your inside windshield and is impossible to completely remove, much to my charge in. Everyone else could not park in the community area overnight. They sent out campus PD every single night. One officer I talked to said they could rake in as many as 200 parking tickets a night from the off-campus housing alone. At $45 a piece, that's quite a haul, the only exception being if a resident printed you out a parking pass. Now each resident was only allowed to print off one pass per night. You did so through your campus profile and it tracked how many times you printed the page. Each page had the date and time and a QR code generated on it. Now being the computer science student that I was, I opened up this page in Inspector and used my phone to read the QR code. Turns out the QR code was also just the date and time of printing. So I ripped the HTML of the page, made my own little QR code generator, and printed out a crap ton of those passes for my friends who crashed at my place overnight, family, or people that may or may not have been unlawfully subletting. Saved my friends thousands overall. When I was in middle school, I used to sell candies for a dollar a pop at the local HEB grocery store in Texas. Candy was often two for a dollar, so I would buy it at HEB and then sell it at school for 100% profit. I built up from $2 worth of candies up to $50 over time, before my candy was confiscated. The people working in the office to my school ate it all. That's not a loophole, that's entrepreneurship and theft on part of the school admin. So a few years back when I was moving into my house, I was looking for furniture. I'm on Wayfair looking at tables and they have all these sets so I start playing around with what I wanted to get. At some point I take the coffee table off and somehow that turns the end tables and sofa tables into zero dollars. I'm like this can't be right, screw it I'll order like 15 of each and sell them, expecting to get billed or contacted at some point about it. Within a week 30 end tables and sofa tables arrive at my house which cost me nothing and I sold them on Craigslist over the next couple of weeks. Tried to go on to order more, but they fixed the issue by then. Papa John's website used to let you stack coupons. They had a coupon, three mediums for 21 bucks. They also had five off 20, four off 16, and three off 12 coupons. As long as you applied them in the right order, you could get three mediums for 
I probably shouldn't think too much about how many times I used that. Boy, it was a sad day when I realized I couldn't stack coupons anymore. The delivery guys used to think I had some relationship with the management because I always got so much crap for so cheap. SOJ Arbitrage back in the day, Diablo 2. For those that don't know, there was this ring everyone wanted to be called SOJ, Stone of Jordan, that was basically the currency of the game. It was accepted in trade for pretty much anything you wanted to buy. The only way to get it besides trading for it with another player was to find it or gamble for it in-game. But there was a catch. You had to get two other rings first. Those rings, if you wanted to trade for them, went for about one SOJ for the pair. Now enter eBay. On eBay, SOJ sold for 10 bucks at the time, but the other pair went for 20 to 25. So when I got my first pair of MNN, I didn't start gambling SOJs like everyone else. I sold them and used the money to buy two SOJ. I then traded one for a new MNN and kept the other as pure profit. This continued for a while. I was taking a finance class in college and the teacher was a PhD student. His thesis required a lot of data to be retrieved. He offered his class one quarter point on their final grade for each survey we turned in on his website. As long as we had our name in one of the questions, who led you to the survey? I dropped $20 into MTurk and offered two cents for each person who took the survey and put my name in. I also dropped another $10 and offered a penny for each one. I then posted it to R Hits Worth Turking For. All my $30 was gone in about 35 minutes. I ended the class with a crazy high score and got an A plus to boost my GPA. There's something about this being a finance class that makes it all the more glorious. When I was in college, I procrastinated on a paper or something that had to be emailed to the professor. I would send them an email saying the assignment was attached but didn't attach anything. By the time the professor emailed me back saying it wasn't attached, I had time to finish the assignment and wouldn't get a deduction for it being late, as it was an honest mistake. Only used it a few times, but it really saved my ass a few times. I have a feeling I know why my professors didn't let us email things and we had to turn in papers and such through an online classroom. You can view as many articles as you want on news websites with article view limits, example given New York Times, by using incognito or private modes in your browsers. New York Times limits you to 10 articles, but once you reach that amount, just close and open again in incognito. These news websites tally the numbers of articles that you've read with cookies, which is why incognito mode works. It deletes cookies when you close the incognito window. You don't need to use incognito, you can just manually delete the cookies or use a cookie browser add-on like self-destructing cookies, which deletes cookies when you close a tab. Donuts. I wasn't allowed to say the food wasn't fresh even though I knew it wasn't. So I simply said, I wouldn't eat it, neither should you, order something else. I couldn't get in trouble for it. The percentage of still frozen in the middle sandwiches I've gotten there is 100%. You guys are consistent. Thanks for watching until the end. Please share an example you have in the comments below. Then be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. It really helps us out. Thanks again and see you next time.